Welcome everybody to our Halloween day of Computer Science 1. So you're asking for a bass solo, so uh, Justin Chancellor, the um, bass player from Tool, is one of my favorite bass players. Uh, this is not him, it's a cover, obviously, but it has the tab so it shows you. For those of you that are asking what the numbers were, that's um, on basses and guitars there's frets, and you kind of count you know, the frets and things like that, and there's dots that help you kind of figure out which fret you're on to. And that's just telling you where what finger goes on which fret, basically. So I've also got a, a flea uh, slap bass, but uh, you know, just get going, I guess. Um, so yeah, today we're just gonna we're gonna have some fun. Uh, I just wanted to answer some questions that you had uh, from the comments on the help center. So one student said, um, "Let's see, I don't I don't wanna misquote." Um, uh, okay. the fact they wouldn't test a facial recognition with people of all races seems a little questionable to me yeah so it's a little sus huh yeah so um this was a claim made by joy um in uh, a coded bias and, uh, you know, one of, one of the uh, things we do in academia is we cite people and in general, we trust them. But, uh, you know, if you, if, if a student makes the claim, like, you know, it sounds a little sus that they didn't, uh, they didn't test this on black people. So what I did is I, last night, you know, cause that's actually the kind of thinking that I like to encourage in this class. You know, uh, this is a class where, you know, you, a student call BS on me, your professor, I'm like, good job. I, I, I appreciate that. You're, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're, you're a critical thinker. So I went on to a website that had um, facial uh, databases and things like that. And I downloaded three of them. So uh, the UCSD one, um, I posted a shot of that last night. So UCSD uses link. Um, UCSD uses the Yale Faces database, and so they have these uh, 15 people, or 16 people, I guess, um, photographed from different angles with different expressions, with glasses on, glasses off, smiling, winking, nodding, things like that. And uh, please uh, tell me you, what you notice about this this set of, of faces here. What uh, what kind of observation? Would you make of these uh, of these faces? Held the same facial expressions well this is um yeah that's that's actually true this uh, i the the one that i picked was the front facing um thing and so um each of these people was photographed from different angles and so there's one with all of them winking one with all of them with glasses on one with them smirking you know so yeah they're, they're all um yeah they all have the same facial expression because this is the one that I, I picked, because the front facial facial just seemed like the, the go-to one. Uh, he's when he shuts her lecture chats down. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there's... Uh, um, one woman... <laughs> right I, that that's you know I, nobody nobody mentioned that but you know out of the 16 people there's there's one woman right and um, there's some Indian people um, but um, yeah people with actually like really dark skin are, are not are not in here so but I mean that's only 16 people so I then went to the Caltech one and here are all of the Caltech images. And 
And yeah, no black people in that one either. So 450 images, zero, uh, zero black people. Uh, they do have more women, it looks like. There's one, two, yeah, three, you yeah. know. So there's, there's more women than uh, the other one. But again, uh, no black people. So, so then uh, I went to Georgia Tech's one because Georgia is a state that I looked it up. I don't know this off the top of my head. Georgia is a state that is 30 something percent black. So I'm like, well, certainly Georgia would have um, black people in their facial recognition database. And in fact, they do, they have, they have one. So face number 43, there you go. So out of the 50 people in the Georgia Tech database, there is a single black person. So good job, Georgia. 2% of your 2% of your facial recognition database is black in a state that is 30 something percent black. So, um, so why do you have all these saved to your PC? Uh, I, because I was looking at it last night, the, the question was, you know, was the claim that I, I, I quoted without actually investigating it myself, which, you know, is something I'll, I'll do, you know, because nobody has time to fully investigate every claim, you know, but if somebody's like, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's accurate or not, then I'm like, good, good point. I'll, I'll look at it. So I, I just randomly selected three facial recognition databases. Well, it wasn't random. The Georgia Tech one, um, I picked specifically because it's in a state that's 30% black. So, um, yeah. And, and as it turns out, yeah, the, the databases, uh, I don't know, you know, I, 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 I sort of, suspect it wasn't deliberate you know what i mean like the way these things work is um you know that it, it probably was just like you know it just it just worked out that way but you know if you're training if you're training your ai on these because these are training sets in computer science these aren't like random faces they're training sets used to train machine learning ai to recognize faces and you know, the, the coded bias claim was, was correct, you know, like, you know. Implicit bias. Um, yeah, you know, um, implicit bias is, a, is a, a related concept. Implicit bias is the notion that we've learned to associate certain races or uh, it doesn't even have to be races, uh, uh, which again is a word that I, I, I dislike because it, the word race itself is, is racist because it implies that people should stick to their own skin color for, you know, uh, you know, who you marry and, and whatnot. So, um, you know, like if you've learned to associate the word woman with caring, you know, and, and so there's a test at Harvard called the IAT, which, um, Uh, which you can take and it's supposed to sort of reveal your hidden biases and, and things like this. And you can take it on, uh, uh race, gender, sexual orientation. Like um, so when the tests actually came out, I actually had an email correspondence with the authors, which were at Harvard and to to say university of Washington. And, it was funny because I was emailing from my UCSC account, so they wrote back, Dr. Kearney. I was in grad school at the time, you know, but they wrote back, Dr. Kearney. And they, they took it seriously because my email address was from UCSC, uh, which is hilarious, you know. And so I, I had I had an exchange with them, and I, and I, I asked questions. It's like, you know, um, the English language has negative associations with the word black since, you know, ancient times, like maybe not ancient medieval times, right? There's the black death, um, as the most famous example, you know? Um, and so if you, if you reveal that there is an association with black and badness, you know, how, I asked them, like, how have you tried to figure out if it's due to that or if it's due to racism, you know, and they, they didn't have an answer, you know? And the, um, 
the studies they ran and published on were based on a predominantly white um, uh, audience, you know, at Harvard, right? And, uh, you know, you would think that they would have run their experiment on people with different racial groups to see how their biases, you know, differed, and, and they didn't. Um, so, you know, there, there were... Uh, and there still are issues with it. And the biggest issue actually with the implicit bias test is that it's supposed to sort of reveal, you know, your secret racism, right? Uh, the trouble is, is that if you actually look at people's IAT results and correlate it to actual racist behaviors, like choosing to hire somebody or choosing not to hire somebody, you know, based on their skin color, like they'll send out fake resumes and, um, have a picture of a white person or a black person or um, Asian or whatever. Um, you know, you would think that if the IAT revealed you had a secret bias against black people, that you'd be less likely to hire people. But, and, and that is true, I think on the very highest end and, and don't, don't entirely quote me on this. It's been a while since I've looked at it, but I believe the people describe the absolute worst, most racist, I think they do discriminate against black people, but people that are like slightly secret racist actually hire black people more. And right, so if, so the results, from what I remember, is that if you secretly have a slight bias against uh, black people, you're actually more likely to hire black people than um, than people that scored neutrally. And so, to me, that was very. I think that undermined, you know, most of the premise of the implicit um, aptitude test. Uh, the uh, implicit association test because you know if this test doesn't actually translate into racist behavior in real life it's completely pointless i mean it might be interesting as a you know purely curiosity like psychological revelation of yourself or something and it might get you to think about your own biases and things like that and it's maybe valuable in that but a lot of places use it to test if their employees are racist or not so you go into a, you go into a company and they're like, take this IAT test and we're going to find out if you're racist or not. And then you could not get hired, you know? And so, and so that to me is deeply concerning, right? When you're using something that, um, doesn't have an actual legitimate scientific basis, basically like it, you know, if this test did reveal racist behavior, that's one thing, but um, it, and the authors say, well, yeah, hiring more black people than white people is racist also. And, and I'm like, all right, come on. You're like, you know, you're, you're trying to win both ways, right? Like if, if somebody who scored racist on the IAT didn't hire black people, you'd be like, see, our test works. But they're also saying that if you score medium high in the IAT and you, you hire more black people, that also counts as verifying their findings. And I'm like, that's BS. You cannot say that, you know, like you can't have it both ways. You know, only if you just magically happen to hit exactly, you know, down the middle. So, uh, so, 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 yeah. All right. College student live streams among a swollen lecture. Uh, is it because they're specifically trying to be, not to be racist? That's, that's the theory. Yeah. So the theory is like, if somebody like takes the IAT and they're like, oh damn, I'm, I'm a little bit racist then they kind of like compensate for it, right? That That's that's the theory by, I think it was Green, uh, what was his name? Greenwald? Greenwald, yeah. Yeah, so it's 98. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that was his thing. He's like, like they're, they're compensating. And so it still reveals racism. And I'm like, well, you, you're, you're trying, you're, you're trying to say that that, that was, that was, that was my, my issue with it. Okay. Um, uh, yep. And then, uh, somebody was asking about, uh, at the end of last class, if I had met, uh, Giancarlo Espinoza and no, I have not, but I, I did meet Darth Maul. So, um, I was at Comic-Con and, uh, I was walking around Comic-Con in one of my martial arts outfits because I've done martial arts since 97 
and with one of my buddies who was from my martial arts school. And uh, Ray Park was there signing autographs. He was Darth Maul, obviously, he's the most famous for. He was also Toad in X Men and um, great martial arts, fantastic dude. And, and so he's like, Oh, do you guys do martial arts? And we're like, Yeah, we do. And he's like, Let's talk martial arts. I'm like, I'd love to. And so and so we just sat there like at Comic Con, like talking to him for for uh, for a while. And then at the end of it, he's like, Hey, um, yeah, because this was on the Saturday of Comic Con. He's like, Hey, um, is your is your is your school is your dojo open on on Sunday? I'm like, Technically no, but I have the keys to the place because I'm an instructor there. Um, I can open it up. He's like, I'd love to work out with you guys. And I'm like, What? Like, that's cool. Um, you know. And he's like, Yeah, I mean, I I think I might have something tomorrow morning, but um, but if I don't, I'll, I'll give you a call and, and we can, we can like hang out at your dojo and like do martial arts together and stuff. I'm like, that'd be incredible, you know? And then it turned out he had he, had, he did have plans, I think. So I didn't get it. I didn't get to like do boxing with, uh, with Darth Maul, unfortunately, but he was a cool dude. I liked, I liked him a lot. He was a neat dude. And, and, and he knows his stuff too. Like, so. Um, all right. So yeah, yeah. Uh, you could have had, yeah. <laughs> I could, have, I could have done the quite uh, quite Qui- Gon yeah. <laughs> yeah, he would have sliced me in half or something. Okay, so that is that is it for our lecture today. If you want to leave, um, I'm not going to stop you. But uh, I was thinking we could do some Jackbox. It's it's basically a Halloween party, so uh, we can do Jackbox. Uh, you don't have to buy anything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stream it on my computer here and what you do is you get your cell phone and um, you open up the browser I don't have my cell phone on me or you can have a browser on your computer either way when I put it up it creates a lobby and uh, then um, it, it has a URL and, a, and an access code so you type in the URL it asks for the access code you punch that in and then you join in on the game um, on your cell phone or on your browser on the computer and stuff like that. So, um, when's the Jackbox right now? Yeah. So, uh, if you, uh, want to get the extra credit points, um, I don't know how, how we'll do that. Um, what, what, anyone know off the top of their head, uh, which Jackbox games support the most people? Cause some of them, like they're all limited to around eight or so, but some of them allow people in the lobby, like people to observe and they can play also. Um, so if anybody knows like one that would support the uh, 30 people that we have here right now, um, let, let me know. But uh, I think basically what you'll do is, is just participate in some Halloween activity, play Jackbox, uh, Age of Empires among us. I'm going to post the schedule uh, probably around noon or so when these activities are going to take place. And then on Canvas, you just write in what you did. Um, if you want to do uh, costuming or cosplay or something like that, there's a Halloween channel here on Discord, and you can be like, here's my Spider-Man outfit, you know, or whatever. And um, and basically just on Discord, just tell me how you participated in the Halloween party. Or uh, if you don't like calling it Halloween, call it the Harvest Festival, or I don't care. Um, and, uh, and then you'll get extra credit points. So we're just going to have fun now. I'm going to stop the stream now. There's no reason to record and upload uh, me drawing things badly on Drawful. So I'm just going to call it here, and you're free to stay or leave. It's up to you.